Hi, I'm Barbara Gaines. This is our friend Dave. Hi, how are you? Mary's not here. Where is Mary? She's... Uh, on assignment? That's right, she's on assignment. I have a theory because uh, it's show business and I don't know that show business theories apply to life generally. This is my theory. Uh, one of your programs that I happened to catch, and by the way, you know I can't stay up this late. Sure. But um, you were talking about Brian Tetta and how you were thinking of bringing him over to produce your show, which is in uh, desperate need of production. Yeah, I think it was it, you it, talking about him, but yeah. Wasn't? I can't recall. Right. Uh, but it's, it's like, is it too late for a CPR? Uh, you know, you go to the funeral and it's an open casket. Is it too late for, oh, I guess it, that's kind of like your show. In the best <laughs> sense of the expression. Right. But anyway, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I suspicion is that Brian Tetta, you know, he got no, wind right. of us talking, you talking about hiring him over here. Then he started watching the Barbara Gaines show. He saw Mary. He liked what he saw, which uh, is uh, maybe the only thing you like what you see when you watch this program. Right. And then no offense to you, by no, the way. You do, no. a great, you do a great job. Why would job. I take offense? Yeah. So here's my theory. Brian uh, saw Mary, heard his name, watched the show, saw Mary, and has called her up and is probably right this very minute auditioning Mary for a position on The View. And do I have proof? No. Have I been in show business all my life? Yes. So it's a, it's a strong possibility. I think so. Wow. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing Mary on The View. Well, no, then, then you lose a, a, a valuable part of your own show. You're not some, no, then you uh, engage in litigation and, uh, and sue uh, uh, Brian for every nickel he's worth. Oh, I am so supportive of my, of my people. Well, look, let's just wait and see. Let's see if, we, if I'm right about any of this. I, I could be delirious. You can All right. steal Whoopi. Oh, then you could get, oh, maybe we arrange a trade. Right. Yes, we get Whoopi. Right. Oh, this That's is brilliant. Brilliant, Walter. Nice going, Walter. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of family and <clears throat> things, we, mm -hmm. we lost a kind of a family. Well, club. this is very important to me, very important to people who know things about comedy in particular. Uh, Bruce McCall uh, pa passed away. Not sure of the man's age but it was very sad 80s. In, in his 80s. Uh, we uh, knew his daughter, Amanda, who worked with us on uh, one of our shows, Amanda McCall, and knew of his wife, Polly, and knew of the three of them as, as family. And adjunct to that, I always thought that Bruce McCall represented something very rarefied in the world of comedy and art and writing. Years ago, I came to know him because of National Lampoon published um, a Sunday supplement from the Dakron, Ohio um, newspaper. And it was as funny and as tightly funny and as smart and crisp a parody as I've ever seen. And then it was later republished in a book that he did that I dearly love called Zany Afternoons. Yeah, we love that book. Oh, my God. Uh, it was one of two books that my son took with him to college was Zany Afternoons and the other Adam Resnick's book, uh, Will Not Attend. Both great. And those, those two books are, I think, maybe singularly, if you can have two books representing a single impression, it will make you laugh out loud. And if you don't appreciate Bruce McCall and also uh, Adam Resnick, luckily Adam did not pass away, although check. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I've seen him recently. Oh, yeah, did you really? Yeah. How's he doing? Good. Okay. Uh, anyway, those two books represent to me kind of a, a North Star of comedy. Uh, so it was a great loss. And he, he did several books, uh, Zany Afternoons, uh, Marvel Town, uh, all foreign countries look like meat. I'm butchering the title. <laughs> no, it is something like Some, that. Some something like that. And then, then this one here, which uh, was was always a, a great thrill for me and a bit of an embarrassment. And here's the embarrassment: uh, Bruce McCall and David Letterman. And and it was through Amanda that I suggested this idea that uh, wealthy people were buying up. Uh, wilderness land and turning it into peculiar hobbies for themselves. Uh, she took it to her father and her father liked the idea of putting out a book like this. And 
I knew I was not going to really participate beyond that, and, and I didn't accept that uh, Amanda would bring in drawings that her father had done, and I loved it because I got to see the drawings, and they smelled of tobacco, cigar smoke, <laughs> because he, he, when he was working on the book, he was still smoking cigars in their apartment, and I found that uh, one of many delightful aspects of it. But the reason that I kind of forced this issue was I just wanted another Bruce McCall book because uh, they're nothing but fun. You know, he was on the show. Oh yeah, a few times. Yeah, he was on the show a few times. And he, um, uh, I think that the word taciturn, uh, uncomfortably taciturn, and he's somewhere in that between taciturn and uncomfortable. And, and I, in awe of the guy, so it looked like uh, we were at a workshop for beginning ventriloquists. Like the dummy wasn't right and the guy operating the dummy wasn't right. Uh, but they're hilarious because it was, in, in those days, neither of us really belonged on television. But anyway, uh, that's the reason for this. And uh, if if there were ever a second printing, I think I'd have my name taken off of there. But I, I love the association with uh, Amanda and uh, at arm's length working with her father. And we were, we were nominated for a Thurber Prize, Bruce and I. Oh, do you know who... You didn't win, you know, no, we did? Didn't, no, I forget who won, but the person who won, you had to get up and give a little uh, synopsis of your work. And uh, the, the person who won, gave, it, was, it was like a sales pitch. And it was eloquent and it was motivating and it was laughing and fun. And, and then Bruce gets up and, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then you got a thing and uh, that's all we got. And then he sits down and we were all like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, here's the other thing. The New Yorker magazine, uh, as you may know, they were in such trouble financially. And by the way, from this point on, none of this is true. I'm just making this up because <laughs> I, li I like how this sounds. Yeah. Uh, the New Yorker magazine almost went out of business and it financially in great trouble. And then Bruce McCall came along and started illustrating covers for the magazine. And I think he did... 50, maybe, not an exaggeration. And then they, uh, uh, they became so successful, The New Yorker, that they were purchased by Reader's Digest. Oh, he and, brought them back. Yes, and from that point on to today, uh, they're still, uh, I think, still purchased, uh, or Sports Illustrated bought them. And, but it was thanks to Bruce McCall that they are still in business today. All right, thanks for, for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you Labor Day. Right. I would like these lights always to follow me around. Oh, brighter than Are usual. Are the lights always here? These? Yeah. Yeah. Huh.